Good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC 103, our New Testament survey. Today, we are going to study on First and Second Timothy. So even before we could begin with our session, may I request one of you all to please lead us in prayer? Sure, Prince, please go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this dear Lord Father. We thank you for this uh, gathering, oh Lord Father. Thank you for uh, bringing us all together in one accord, oh Lord Father, to sit and uh, to listen to your word, oh Lord Father, to learn and uh, to know you more, oh Lord Father. Even as we are going to dive into the word, oh Lord Father, Jesus, we ask you, Lord Father, to give your Holy Spirit, oh Lord Father with us, O oh Lord Father, and help us, O oh Lord Father, to understand, uh, to learn and apply it in our lives and live according to your word, O oh Lord Father God. Come and have your ways, O oh Lord Father. We submit our minds, we submit our hearts into your hands. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Okay, let me share the PowerPoint presentation. Give me a minute, please. Everyone are able to view it, right? Yeah, thank you, thank you. So we're going to study on both these letters, first and second Timothy. Do we know who Timothy is? Who's Timothy? Paul's adopted son. So what do we know about Timothy? Yes, Timothy is Paul's spiritual son. So what do we know about him? From the scriptures that we study, how much do we know about Timothy? So even before we could study on Timothy, I just wanted to let you all know, First and Second Timothy and the letter Titus are known as the pastoral epistles or ecclesiological epistles. Because in them, Paul gives the instruction about, uh, to his young leaders how to raise to be a leader, how you need to develop your character, the importance of the character, and some of the spiritual oversight as a pastoral care and uh, pastoral care for the respective ch churches have been instructed in these two letters. He also gives a, um, a governing and functioning instruction to the local churches and the responsibilities that needs to be conducted by the leaders in the local church. That's one of the reasons why these three letters have been called as the ecclesiological letters or the pastoral epistle. Now, we will move on to know about Timothy. Who is Timothy? Who is Timothy? What do we know about Timothy? Yes, Timothy is the spiritual son. What else do we know? Okay, Timothy was born in Lystra, a place called Lystra. Timothy's mother was Jewish in the Acts, in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 1. Can I request one of you all to please read? Acts chapter 16, verse 1. Acts chapter 16, verse 1. Paul came also to Derby and also to Lystra. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. Thank you. So what we see from this scripture is that Timothy's mother was a Jewish woman and his father was a Gentile. He was a Greek. Now, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, we see that both Timothy's mother named Eunice and his grandmother named Lois were strong believers. They had a godly influence over his life of Timothy bringing up 
in the Jewish culture. So we see that in Acts chapter 14, verse uh, uh Acts chapter 14, verse 6 to 23, when we read, we see that he likely came to Christ on uh, Paul's ministry. When Paul was ministering at Lystra in his first missionary journey. So um, Timothy must have been very young at the age of 15, approximately, some scholars say. You would have come across this God of the gospel. Apostle Paul and we would have seen Jesus the Lord and Savior in Apostle Paul's ministry during his first missionary journey after which he was growing more in the Lord and when we come to chapter 16 in book of Acts chapter 16 when we read uh, um, first three verses I know we read first verse can I request one of you all to read uh, verse 2 and 3 please She was well spoken uh, of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany, accompany him and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places for they all knew that his father was a Greek. Thank you. So Apostle Paul felt the need to raise Timothy as a spiritual leader because of the interest that Timothy had in the ministry, had in the ministry, and he continued to travel along with Apostle Paul. Now, as Apostle Paul saw the interest and the urge within Timothy to know more about God and to serve the Lord in the ministry, Apostle Paul felt the need for Timothy to be circumcised because he was ministering among the Jews as well. Because tomorrow the Jews should not raise a question against Timothy or against his leadership because Timothy's father was a Greek. So to avoid any such conflict in future, so Apostle Paul made sure that Timothy was circumcised and it was known to everyone. So that was one of the reasons why Apostle Paul circumcised Timothy in the ministry so that he can uh, serve as a leader in the ministry and there won't be any conflict or objection for his leadership. We also see that Paul used him to visit churches on his behalf and slowly Apostle Paul has been raising a leadership skill in Timothy by giving him the responsibilities. When Apostle Paul is there, he made him the in charge. He said, go visit such churches, strengthen them in the word and in the spirit, bring their reports. And while he's addressing the letters, he's also commending Timothy on behalf of saying that he is my spiritual son. I'm commending him. At the same time, you know, he's expecting the church believers to respect him, see him in the leadership role. At the same time, we see Apostle Paul is also encouraging the young Timothy, do not have the spirit of fear or don't be timid, don't be meek. You are the leader. You need to stand. You need to have a, a, a contact, good conduct over your life, building a strong character, and you need to stand. We also see that. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Can I request one of you all to please turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 19 to 24. Rin, can you please read? Philippians chapter 2, verse 19 to 24. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character, that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Therefore, I hope to send him at once as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. Thank you. 
So what we see here is Timothy having a close relationship with Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, in fact, considered him to be faithful and to be his spiritual son. And as we read in Philemon chapter 1, 1, and later in chapter 2, 19, also in the other letters like um, Colossians and also the letter Philippians, we see that Timothy was with Paul in Rome during his first Roman imprisonment. So in the map, we see that, um, you know, let me go to the map. Okay. So in map, we see Ephesus, where it's marked as 2, Ephesus. Timothy receives a second letter. And here we see Rome, 1. Rome, after his final arrest, Paul writes a second letter to Timothy. But what happened here is Timothy accompanied Paul to Rome in his first missionary, uh, first imprisonment, and he was with Paul, assisting him in the prison. So after that, in First Timothy chapter one, three, we see that after Paul was released, he accompanied Paul to Ephesus where it's marked as to accompany him to Ephesus, when he seems to have been placed in charge of the church in Ephesus. Because of the, um, because Apostle Paul was giving him the opportunity and uh, training him to be the leader, we also see that Paul gave him certain responsibilities and he allowed him to stay and pastor the church at Ephesus while he traveled to different places. Well, Apostle Paul traveled to different places. So we see that, uh, you know, uh, he remained at Ephesus and he took care of the pastoral care of the church and he continued to do the work that was instructed by Apostle Paul. And the tradition suggests that Timothy would have been martyred under the hand of the Roman government. So we don't know exact date when, but this is what the history tells about Timothy. So Paul's love for the Ephesian church and his continued love towards a spiritual son developed Timothy eventually to be a pastor and to be a leader. With that, we will move on. When was First and Second Timothy written? So there are different viewpoints, but we see that First Timothy was most likely written uh, after Paul was released from the Roman imprisonment while he was carrying with his work on ministry. So Timothy has been placed as a pastor of the church at Ephesus, and Paul was ministering in other places while Timothy was taking care of the church at Ephesus. So probably between 60 to approximately 62 to 64 AD, the first letter to Timothy would have been written. And the second letter to Timothy was written during Paul's second imprisonment at Rome. When he was in the prison and he was about to die, he writes the second letter. One of the reasons why he gives a lot of clues in the second letter about his last days, his, his journey in the last few days. And he's also addressing each one by name and commending them. He addresses at least 23 individuals in the letter. With that, we will move on to the central theme of this letter, the first and second Timothy. So when we address the theme of this letter, can I request one of you all to please turn to first Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. Can you all please read? As it is a pastoral epistle, so there's a lot of instruction been given to the pastors. So as a pastor, ministry leader, what are certain things that we need to be watchful and have a conduct with us? Okay. Um, yeah. If you have taken chapter 3, verse 14 and 15 from First Timothy, I request you all to please read. These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Thank you. So here we see Apostle Paul is writing 
and he is letting Timothy and also each of us know how to conduct ourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. And he also says it is the pillar, the ground of truth. So here are certain issues that Apostle Paul is addressing to Timothy. What is it? He's encouraging, he's saying, okay, it's there on the slide, right? Yeah. Resisting error and false doctrine. We are reading from 1 Timothy chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. In all the six chapters of 1 Timothy, we see that Apostle Paul is addressing certain issues. Firstly, he is talking about how to resist the error and false doctrine. How do we resist the error and false doctrine? From the previous letters, what do we learn? Should we emphasize on the false doctrine or should we emphasize on the truth that is there in the gospel? Class. Yes, we need to emphasize on the truth and look at the cost. The second you would like to emphasize on guidelines for prayer and public worship. What is the guidelines? He's, he's, he's been instructing all this because there were certain issues even at the church of Ephesus. That's one of the reasons why Apostle Paul is addressing these issues, setting up guidelines for the leaders to follow, for the church that would be birthing after that to follow, for you and I to follow. The church that we would be branching out, that we would be launching or starting in future for us to follow. So Apostle Paul is giving us the guidelines how to pray in public worship. Third point, he talks about uh, guidelines for women in the service. There were certain issues that Timothy had to handle with related to women. Okay, we will look into it later. And then I would request you all to please take a look, take a note of all these scriptures, read through this so that we would exactly know what was the issue and what was the instruction of Apostle Paul giving into Timothy and to the church. Fourth point, guidelines for selecting the elders and deacons. You cannot select anyone as an elder and deacon. But there are certain guidelines that we need to look at them even before we could raise them up as a leader. If any are needed, I can definitely share these slides on the stream so that you all can download and go through these scriptures. Okay, Even for the class online and for the e-learning, I will definitely be sharing all this. When we see warning against the false doctrine that have been circulating. Six, we see the personal challenges to Timothy has been the young pastor of the church. He was a very young leader. Anyone can overpower him. But then your Apostle Paul is writing a letter to the church and also to Timothy, encouraging him to be stern and the, under this leadership that grow in the gifting and calling that God has given him. The same goes with you and I. Sometimes at church we see elders or people may overpower us, but then we need to know that God has called us. He has called us and he has gifted us to grow in and through him. And, we re and to rely on them. And seven point, we see the guidelines for treating or treatment of church members, including the older saints and widows. How do you address the people in the church, the elders, elderly men and women, or uh, the widows who have lost their life partner? The eighth point, guidelines for treating of the elders of the church. Ninth, we see guidelines for slave and master relationship. There should not be any partiality in the church, especially because that was very common practice those days between the master and the slave. But then how to conduct them in the church? Because in the church, we are all on the same level ground. There's no partiality. How should we treat them? The 10th point is warning about the love of 
money and instruction to the church. So as a leader, let not your mind be set on money or how to become rich. That should be a that should be left to God because God knows what we need and He will lead us. But then let not set our heart or mind on that. That should be a least concern. And the, some other issues that Apostle Paul was addressing to Timothy in the second letter was personal instruction to Timothy. What was the personal instruction to Timothy as he was a good leader or a soldier in Christ? Apostle Paul was encouraging him. When we read 2 Timothy chapter 1, Two, we see certain uh, uh, certain things that Apostle Paul is encouraging Timothy with his words. He's telling Timothy, do not be ashamed of the gospel. Maybe Timothy was going through certain challenges. As we know, he was a young leader. He may be going through certain challenges against the false teachers and leaders and against these elders in the church or the widows in the church who are misbehaving with his leadership. So maybe Apostle uh, Timothy is going through a tough, challenging atmosphere in his ministry. So Apostle Paul is encouraging him, saying, do not be ashamed of the gospel. Preach the word again and again. Second, he's encouraging him saying, stand fast in the word of God. Hold on to the word of God because the word of God is the life. It has, it is a double-edged sword. It has the power. Hold on to the word of God. Third, he says, be strong in grace. God has given you the grace to handle the church. You see, Apostle Paul is not giving up on Timothy. We're not sure what Timothy was going through, what he was addressing to Paul. But then here we see there's a continuous encouragement given to Timothy for him to grow and to be shaped into a strong leader. So he's saying, don't give up on the grace that has been given to you by God. Be diligent in the work of the Lord. Do not waver, be diligent. And then he says, flee from youthful lust. So just like you and me, even Timothy would have been going through his youthful lust challenges, handling his adulthood. But then, but then here Apostle Paul is encouraging him. Flee from the youthful lust. And he's lastly saying, avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. Even in the letter of Peter, we see Peter is encouraging us as much as possible. Be in peace with people around you. So dispute, uh, avoid foolish and ignorant disputes or arguments as much as possible. Be in peace with others. Secondly, he's addressing on the warning about apostasy in the last days. People were concerned about the second coming of Jesus and also a warning against the last days. So Apostle Paul addresses on those things in 2 Timothy chapter 3. With that, we will move on to the uh, key verses. There are three key verses from both these letters. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15, he says, If I am dismayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. This is one of the key verses from 1 Timothy. And in 2 Timothy, we have listed two key verses. says that 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, we read that all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, the reproof for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, truly equipped for every good work. Just like how Paul is instructing to Timothy, he's also instructing you and me, knowing, for, let, for letting us know that every word 
in the scripture is important because it is the inspiration of God himself. And in chapter 4, verse 2, in the letter to Second Timothy, we read that, Preach the word and be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and teaching. So your Apostle Paul is telling the young Timothy and the leaders like us, saying, be ready in season and out of season. Yes, you have been praying for uh, to open new doors. God will definitely open new doors for each of us. But he's asking us, be ready, be prepared. You never know when you will be called. When you are called, be ready to share the gospel. Let's look into some of the unique features. The unique features of these letters, first and second Timothy, are Timothy's character and personality that we need to look into. When we look into Timothy's character and personality, we can actually compare ourselves or we can relate ourselves to him. Firstly, in First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, can I request you all to read First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Thanks. So we see that he's encouraging Timothy, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to all the believers in word, in conduct, in conduct, in love and spirit and faith and in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. So just like Timothy, Paul is encouraging you and I. It is one of the reasons why we need to take a look at our own character. Because character is something that holds our anointing. Character is important. It should be the strong foundation of our ministry. We need to hold on to our character. Our name is very important. Our character is very important, especially when it comes to ministry. When we have been raised as a ministry leader, we need to look at our character. Mostly, um, uh, Apostle Paul, uh, uh, sorry, Timothy may have been in the age of 40 years and he was living in the culture uh, of those days and here we see Apostle Paul is encouraging him. Why? Maybe is addressing to a big church at Ephesus about 60,000 members. The church had grown okay about 60,000 and no doubt that people would have been different age sector would have been in that church young old elders widows and certainly timothy would have gone through a lot of challenges to handle a church as big as this and he was a very young guy and the church also know that he's been young and uh, he need a lot of experience and it is a growing church, there are a lot of challenges coming in. But praise God that Apostle Paul was backing Timothy in all the ways. In all the ways. He was giving him his own uh, uh, space for him to grow into the leader that he had to be. To grow in his responsibility that he need to take to overcome the challenges that he was going through as a youngster. So Apostle Paul, knowing the challenges, he was also giving him that time period, but being a strong pillar behind him, encouraging, motivating, and leading Timothy, backing him up in all the challenges that he would have been facing in the church. We also see in um, chapter 1, that is in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 12, when we read. Okay, 6 and 7, can I request you all to read, please? 
therefore i remind you second timothy of, chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 are you able to hear me are you able therefore, to hear therefore i remind you to stir up the gift of god which is in you through the laying on my hands on of my hands for god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind thank you the apostle paul is uh, you know encouraging timothy like stir up the gift of god which is in you how did you get it by laying of the hands by the elders and god has not given you the spirit of fear maybe he was very shy timid meek that is maybe one of the reason why apostle paul is praying and instructing him and telling him saying that you do not have the spirit of fear but you have the spirit of power love and a sound mind so he is stirring saying that stirring the gift that is within him and is commanding that spirit of fear to leave him and he is also encouraging him do not be afraid of the gospel but hold on to the truth and we also see in first timothy chapter 5 verse 23 first timothy chapter 5 if you all are taken can you all please read no longer drink only water but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent informities thank you so what happens here timothy due to stress in the church the stress and uh, uh, the pressure in the ministry he's got some problem in his body like something like stomach upset or something to do with stomach ache so apostle paul is encouraging him no longer don't drink just the water take little wine so wine in form of a medicine is encouraging him to take that may do good to him okay so later part in chapter 4 and also in first timothy chapter 1 and chapter 4 and chapter 6 we see that some of the instruction that apostle paul is giving timothy like timothy may have had a, a tendency toward the philosophical pursuits in the church so uh, one second i'm just seeing the slide yeah so he is addressing some of the philosophical uh, truth that uh, timothy may have believed or followed in so he is trying to bring a correction towards that so in first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 to 5 when we read uh, paul is encouraging timothy to reject the seducing spirits and the doctrines of the devil that will cause some to depart from the faith so again and again he's correcting it's not that timothy was all perfect being a young leader he did have certain correction need to be corrected by paul so and the second thing we see in first timothy chapter 1 verse 4 to 7 can we turn to chapter 1 first timothy chapter 1 verse 4 to 7 he's saying don't listen to fables and endless genealogies that do not build faith and cause many to stray from the truth so as a young leader maybe he's giving in to all the elderly teachings and the fable stories that the people come up with him and again apostle paul is being stern and correcting timothy telling him don't listen to some old fables and endless genealogies because we don't build our faith on them but we build the faith on the gospel of jesus christ if you go towards teaching on that if you place your belief on those fables and endless stories there may be people who will go astray and then again the third correction reject old wives uh, fables which are contrary to the faith see one thing we need to know the church in ephesus are from gentile background people from different faith so they were trying to bring in their knowledge their philosophical thoughts and experience into the church and they trying to influence that with timothy being a young leader so apostle paul being very stern in correcting timothy timothy don't give in to these 
fables or to these old stories and talks stand firm hold on to the gospel and that's the true and then fourth he says avoid the contradiction of what is falsely called science or knowledge people may coming come in and tell uh, uh, timothy saying that hey this is science this is knowledge this is what has been believed from our forefathers okay it can be towards anything maybe about the creation they may be talking about many other things but here apostle paul is warning timothy and also he is telling us even we may come across such contradiction even in our ministry so he is telling avoid the contradiction of what is falsely called science or knowledge when cause some to stray from the faith and he also says in um second timothy chapter 2 verse 16 to 18 verse 16 to 18 can i request one of you all to please read but shun profane and idle babbling for they will increase to more ungodliness and their messages will spread like cancer hinas and uh, pilates are of this sort yeah we see that is asking timothy to shun away from profane and vain babblings that overthrow the faith so he's asking us to shun away from all that and later we also see paul gives a, a true list of leadership qualification in chapter uh, 1 timothy chapter 3 chapter 3 verse 1 onwards it says this is a faithful saying if a man desire uh, the position of a bishop he desires a good work a bishop there must be blameless the husband of one wife temperate sober minded of good behavior hospitable able to teach not given to wine not violent not greedy for money but gentle not quarrelsome not covetous one who rules his own house well having his children in submission with all reverence um i'm moving to verse 6 not a novice lest been puffed up with pride he fall into same uh, condemnation as the devil uh seventh he says uh, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil so he also says likewise from eight on which qualification of a deacon i request all to please uh, read through because he says you should not be double tongued and not be given into wine not greedy for money um he also uh, encourages uh, saying that you know you need to uh, test and then serve as a deacon he needs to be uh, reverend not slanderer temperate faithful in all things a deacon must be a husband of one wife ruling their children and their own house well and those who have served well as deacon obtain for themselves a good standard and great boldness in faith which is in jesus christ so he is giving the leadership qualification for you to be a bishop or a deacon what are the qualification some of uh things which are very important as an elder we need to have that in our life as a ministry leader so we will look more closely when we cover the letter to titus on this we'll move on to the next point he talks about you know he outlines what qualifies a widow for assisting in the church so what happened one of the challenge challenge that timothy faced at the church at ephesus was the widows in the church demanded timothy for a daily living so timothy been a young leader so everyone trying to take advantage of him you know they were trying to say i'm a widow there's no one to take care of me uh, so you have to feed me you have to take care of my daily need so they tried uh, trying to do church as their house so it's not about one person just imagine a church with 60000 members imagine how many would have been a widow and how many can timothy take care personally so it was a challenge one of the 
challenge that Timothy faced. So Apostle Paul is bringing a guideline to Timothy, whom he should take care. Yes, we need to take care of widows because there's no one. But even among widows, whom he should take the responsibility of taking care? Whom should the church take care of? So some points I thought we can list it down for us to learn and understand. OK, uh, I didn't change this. Yeah. So we are on the second point about widows. We see that um, she should have no children or grandchildren. Only then we can support her. The second point Apostle Paul emphasizes is that women should be uh, prayerful, looking up to God for the supply, not Timothy or the church. She should look up to God for a daily provision. Third, she must be uh, a simple, uh, frugal living. She should lead a frugal lifestyle, simple lifestyle, not demanding from the church for a daily living so she should be over 60 years of age where she cannot stand on her own but then she is depending so certain uh, widows who are 60 years and above we can help them out and also he's encouraging the woman who's been faithful in the marriage to one man not the women who had different marriages different affairs we cannot help them but you look at the woman who was very faithful in her marriage who was faithful in her character in her conduct towards one man she lost them and here she is dependent and uh, the last two points is making a note and who had a good work look at the conduct look at the character of the woman she should be a good work who has uh, raised many godly children that means she has invested her life in the church by raising spiritual godly children she served in the church she was very hospitable uh, she served in the church and she was part of many charitable deeds when she was well now because she's grown old and she's lost her husband she's uh, uh, you know she, there's no one to take care of the church can take the responsibility of such a woman and because of her diligent in serving god in her younger days when she was strong enough so these are certain characters or certain things that we need to look at a widow especially when we tend to help them and then Paul gives us a great description of the salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. When we read First Timothy chapter 16, uh, sorry, chapter 6, verse 19, he says, In this way they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is true in Christ. Then we see Paul highlights six different loves that may control the path of one's life. He talks about love for money. So he talks about in First and Second Timothy, both these letters he's addressing on certain things where we, uh, we need to be very careful of. One is love for money, love for self, love for pleasure, or love for the worldliness. But there are certain things that Paul is encouraging, the last two points, love for God and love uh, to appear in the last days friend of god that means we conduct our life in a godly manner hoping for the greater reward that we may receive in the presence of god okay so he's encouraging us let your pleasure let your love grow in these two things that is love for god and love towards conducting ourselves well so that we may receive that greater reward in the presence of god so Paul describes many roles for a mature believer in these letters, especially in uh, 2 Timothy chapter uh, 2. We see that Paul is encouraging uh, the believers like you and I who have uh, been raised as a leader in the church. He's saying we need to be a faithful man, a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We need to be an 
athlete who do not give up easily we need to have this never giving up attitude in christ because god is not giving up it is god's character and then fourth is uh, encouraging us we need to be a hard working just like the farmer who does not give up on his crop then he tills the ground he works hard till he see the crop grow produce seed and fruit we he also says we need to be an approved worker by god himself when we the relationship that we have in god god approves the relationship among the people with us and also he is commanding and encouraging timothy saying that you need to be a vessel of honor so conduct yourself in such a way that people look at you as a vessel of honor and always remember that you are the servant of god now one of the thing why should we remember that we are the servant of god class tell me anyone from online you can go and chat for us to have a humble attitude and have a attitude of service in nature we need to remember always that we are the servant of god jesus did not come to be served but to serve so we need to carry this attitude within us later we also see paul gives more insight into the natural situation uh, towards the end that is in second timothy chapter 4 about his end um, as a natural self Uh, he writes about his coming forth death where in chapter 4 second timothy let's turn said second timothy chapter 4 verse 6 to 8 we see that fire for i am ready been poured out as a drink offering at the time of my departure is at hand i have fought a good fight i finished the race i've kept the faith finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge will give to me on that day and not to me only but also to all who have loved this appearing so there are many reasons why apostle paul is writing this one is yes he is ready to die and uh, to let us know that he also in his spirit that lord has revealed him that this is his last days and the uh, lord is also showing him that he has completed the race and uh, he is also encouraging you and i as a leader that you know never give up never give up fight till you have strength in your body move ahead whatever it is go spread the gospel hold on to the great commission that god has given to each of us paul is also speaking about the relationship that we have good and bad times that we may go through he's also saying don't look at the things that do not go well on the earthly ministry okay you may be condemned persecuted falsely accused but do not give up on the relationship on the ministry that lord has placed within you but hold on to the reward from god do not expect any kind of honor from men for the work that you do you at times in the ministry by the other ministry leaders also you may be falsely judged assumed or falsely accused but don't give up your reward is not from men your reward is from god every work that you do every heart attitude every thought that you may have is not hidden in front of god nothing is hidden god knows only for man we need to explain why you did what you did but praise god when it comes to god he is the judge he is the defender you don't have to justify front of god because god knows with what attitude you did so god no so he is saying a defense is from god just like he, he speaks about his defense with caesar and other people that he had to defend in the ministry he acknowledges that the hand of the lord was upon him and the same hand of the lord will upon, be upon you and he gives that final recharge on us so as we end this letter i would like to say just look at paul's mind his attitude even at the end his attitude is not focusing about uh, you know false accusation which has been laid up upon him 
but even at this minute at this point is encouraging the new leader timothy titus is raising up leaders so that the ministry that god placed in him and his heart will not stop but it will be continued this is something that we need to look at change of perspective having the right attitude even at that last minute knowing that your life on this earth is going to end knowing that your ministry may end here but looking at the other space what is lord trying to do what is next for me what is god as in store for me when we have the right attitude we can grow in but in this spirit the ministry that god has planted within you will flourish and grow so this is what apostle paul did let's re reflect on that and end the session with a word of prayer yeah dear god i command each of us into your hand lord i pray like has your hand rested upon apostle paul and later on timothy and titus lord we pray that the same hand will rest upon each of us groom us to be the leader that you have appointed each of us to be that we may be the carrier of that great commission work in our time in our season lord that we may fulfill every call every purpose that you have called us lord we may carry the right attitude just like apostle paul in our life lord no matter what circumstance that we may face and come across thank you for your grace lord that you have placed within us which is stronger which will help us to overcome every challenges every false accusation that we may don't have to handle it but god is watching from above will handle it because he is our defender he is our god the god who called each of us is faithful enough to handle us in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you class for joining in and uh, we will meet up with the next letter next week thank you god bless